हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यूजीसी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर रजनीश रंजन डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एक्सपर्ट एंड वी पी स्काइमेट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल डिजास्टर्स एंड डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट इट्स अ बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रेशनल बिहाइंड दिस मॉड्यूल इज दैट द मॉड्यूल प्रोवाइड्स ए कंसेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ डिजास्टर्स एंड डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट which forms the basis of the subsequent chapters it elaborates on the idea of disasters and reflects on their consequences then the process of disaster management its necessity and components are described finally a brief overview of disaster management in the context of india would be provided in this module the main learning objectives of this module used to develop a conceptual understanding of disasters to understand disaster management and related con concepts to comprehend the process of disaster management in india and many more things in the subject so let's talk about the fundamental concept of disasters you know hazards and disasters have been the companion of mankind since time immemorial the past historical ev evidences across the globe provide many evidences of disaster occurrence in every part of the world affecting human lives habitations and livelihoods with associated losses with increasing developmental interventions and population growth the disasters risk have shown increasing trends over the past few decades there has been a global rise in the number of disasters which is evident from the fact that from 2005 to 2015 more than 1.5 billion people have been affected by disasters with economic losses estimated at us dollar 314 billion per year in the built environment every year south asian countries like india bangladesh pakistan afghanistan nepal etc gets affected by natural and man made disasters like earthquakes floods cyclones avalanches landslides etc which causes great devastations and huge economic losses annually the coastal countries like bangladesh india pakistan and sri lanka have been vulnerable to the threats of cyclones for a long time the southern and eastern coastal parts of bangladesh India and Sri Lanka are exposed to cyclonic disturbances originating in the Bay of Bengal while the western coast of India and the southern coast of Pakistan are vulnerable to cyclones arising in the Arabian Sea South Asian regions are also considered major flood prone regions in the world contributing major loss percentage in the total global loss since 1988 about 382 major floods have occurred in the region claiming many lives large parts of southern afghanistan the province of baluchistan in the remote southwestern region of pakistan northwestern part of bangladesh parts of sri lanka and nepal and several states of india are prone to drought conditions on account of specific socioeconomic conditions the impact of drought is comparatively severe in south asia the high altitude regions of countries like bhutan india nepal and pakistan are vulnerable to a specific glacial lake outburst floods which is called glops avalanches are also common in higher snow clad areas of hindukush himalayan belt of the south asia the countries like afghanistan bhutan india nepal and pakistan are prone to avalanches which claim lives of hundreds of people causing enormous loss of loss of property and infrastructures in the south asia almost entire mountainous terrains of india afghanistan nepal pakistan bhutan and bangladesh are extremely vulnerable to earthquakes these are countries located in seismically active tectonic zones which makes them vulnerable to earthquakes in addition landslides and associated slope failure phenomena is major geological hazard in countries like afghanistan bangladesh bhutan india nepal pakistan and sri lanka 
Now, the question arises as to what should be the correct definition of disaster. Many schools of thought, institutions and disaster practitioners have defined disaster in various ways depending on the requirements and existing scenario. But there has not been any common consensus about the standardized model of definition. However, the commonly accepted view of disaster definition is that it is a natural or anthropogenic occurrence arising with little or no warning causing serious disruption in the functioning of the society or communities affecting lives, livelihoods, surrounding ecology and environments with disruptions in economic activities. Etymologically, the term disaster is derived from Greek words dis meaning the bad and aster meaning a star. It stems from an astrological sense blaming positions of planet for bad omens and impacts. The term disaster has found many interpretations differing across context. But the fundamental notion regarding disasters is of adverse event affecting well-being of mankind and or environmental losses. To understand further, let us examine the different definitions of disaster put forth by different organizations and scholars. Carroll in 2001 defined disasters as an emergency considered severe enough by local government to warrant the response and dedication of resources beyond the normal scope of a single jurisdiction or branch of local government. On the other hand, Carter in 1991 mentioned disaster as event where the affected community has to respond by taking exceptional measures, the impact of which cannot be overcome without external assistance. Thus, the need of external assistance emerges from these definitions. This notion is evident in Drabek's definition of disasters in 1996, where it is stated that resources from beyond the local jurisdiction, state or federal level are required to meet the disaster demands. It is also to be noted that mostly the government or the state is expected to address the overwhelming demands. When we follow the above definition, the idea of a scale becomes significant. A local disaster shall affect the community and might require external support from the state, but it may not be considered disaster when considered from the state level. Similarly, a state level disaster might require national level support, but it might not be a disaster at the national or international level. Thus, the scale at which an event is considered a disaster becomes important. To avoid this subjectivity, thresholds are also used to categorize adverse events as disasters. In such cases, the impacts of the adverse events are quantified and based on the defined thresholds. It is considered whether an event is a disaster or not. Emergency Events Database developed by Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disasters CRED has attempted to record disaster events across countries from 1988. It systematically categorizes disasters and updates it in the publicly accessible database MDAT. To be entered in the CRED database, the following criteria needs to be fulfilled. Number 1. 10 or more people are reported to be killed by the event, 100 people reportedly injured, a call for international assistance or the declaration of a state of emergency. Though the above definition does not include disruption of services or economic losses in its criteria to define a disaster, the same is often taken as a standard to identify disasters. Certain other definitions have also combined both casualty and economic losses. According to Shehan and Havit in 1969, all events which cause at least 100 human deaths, 100 human injuries or US dollar 1 million economic damages are disasters. Dombrowski 1998 defined disaster as a situation involving damage and or loss of lives beyond 1 million German marks and or 1000 persons killed. 
When we consider the above mentioned definition, it is observed that the mentioned issues may not be significant everywhere. For instance, 10 deaths might be a significant number of deaths in a developed country like USA or European nations, but might not be a grave concern for developing nations in the Middle East or the South Asian countries. This has led to the emergence of relative criteria where disaster is considered as a significant disaster if 1 percent or more of total annual GDP of the nation is damaged or affected people is more than 1 percent of the total national population as proposed by Coppola in 2015. Disasters are also considered as stressful and traumatic events. According to Erickson in 1976, any event or condition that could be shown to produce trauma on a large scale would be earned a place on the current roster of disaster. Salter in 1996 defines disaster as a condition or situation of significant distress to a community. Often disasters are associated with suddenness and unpredictability. The occurrence of a sudden or major misfortune which disrupts the basic fabric and normal functioning of a society or community FEMA 9, 2007 justifies this thought. However, the idea of associating disaster with suddenness and unpredictability is largely debated in the contemporary scenario. Lagedic in 1982 mentioned that disaster must not be seen like the meteorite that falls out of the sky on an innocent world. The disaster more often is anticipated on multiple occasions. The recent research interventions recognize the role of anthropogenic elements in converting adverse events to disaster. The socio-economic processes that a society undergoes often determine whether an event manifests as a disaster. In other words, disasters are more than just the event, but rather are subjective phenomena. They arise from the behavior of complex systems, are perceived and take place in a specific socio-economic, historical, cultural and chronological context as proposed by Harlick, Jones and Peters. For instance, flood is a natural phenomena where the sediments carried by the river are deposited on its flood plains. In absence of human settlements, the natural overflowage of water in river channels may not pose any threats. But the same being highly fertile and agriculturally productive attracts human settlements in flood plain. This makes the entire region lucrative for human settlements and activities thus leading to flood disaster. Further, in many cases, dams and dikes are constructed to prevent overflowing and spilling of rivers. This causes sediments carried by the river to be deposited on the river bed, raising the bed level. This reduces carrying capacity of rivers, thus causing frequent overflowing and resultant flood disasters. It is therefore clear that anthropogenic activities are one of the prime factors of flood disasters. The following figures represents how natural hazards like floods interact with vulnerability conditions like unplanned urbanization leading to disasters. Now let us talk about the term crisis, emergency, disaster and catastrophe. Often these terms are used interchangeably in other contexts. But as far as the context of disasters is concerned, each has the specific meaning. The response capacity of human community is crucial to differentiate each as different events that might require different level of attention from responders. On the basis of the level of resources required to handle events, they are classified as follows. Like crisis, the capacity to respond to crisis exceeds the requirement with capacity to spare. Emergency, the capacity to respond to event meets or somewhat exceeds the requirement. Disaster, event requirement exceeds capacity. Catastrophe, demand overwhelms and may destroy capacity. Let us discuss about the concept of disaster management. Disaster management consists of the set of continuous and integrated process of planning, organizing, coordinating and implementing measures for prevention, preparedness, 
mitigation, response, rehabilitation, reconstruction, capacity building, etc. that are undertaken before, during and after disasters with the objective of minimizing damages to lives, livelihood, economy or environment. It also involves organization and management of resources and responsibilities. PERS in 2000 defines disaster management as a process that assists communities to respond both pre and post event in such a way as to save lives, to preserve property and to maintain the ecological, economic and political stability of the impacted region. It involves the body of policy, administrative decisions and operational activities which pertain to the various stages of a disaster at all levels. That has been taken from UNDHA 1992 from FEMA 2007. Further narrowing it down, Romano mentions that disaster management activities include preparedness planning to assess hazard vulnerability, mitigation activities to reduce hazards in the structure of the facility, its equipment, its operations and its personnel, response planning to provide for key support operations such as first aid, search and rescue, building evacuation, emergency communications and general personnel training and recovery in which an organization prioritizes its operations for efficient business continuum and determines how to protect and restore these components. This was opined by Romano in 1995. Routine events like apartment fires, vehicle accidents, road accidents etc do not impact a lot of people. In other words, the capacity of the local community to deal with these events is more than the requirement. So, these events need not to be considered disasters and can be managed effectively by the local community. The non-routine events that exceed the response capacity of the local community are disasters. This view of disasters thereby provides an opportunity to deal with events and thereby control or manage impacts of the hazard events. Thus, it gives rise to the concept of disaster management. Management is making people capable of joint performance by giving them a common goal, values, structure and the ongoing training and development they need in order to perform and to respond to change. Drucker in 1988 opined this concept. Disasters involve change and the community and the responders need assistance in dealing with the events and resultant change. Now, the question arises why disaster management is required in our country. Disasters result in casualty, affects individuals and cause significant damage and losses to the socio-economic processes, services and the environment. These, in these impacts can be minimized or avoided through preventive processes and preparedness and by reducing vulnerabilities. Also the post-disaster chaos and stress can be minimized through proper planning, coordination between intervening agencies and institutional strengthening. The reconstruction process also plays an important role in creating or reducing further risks, thus to minimize vulnerabilities and to reduce exposure of the society to hazardous events, disaster management is required. The following diagram indicates that disaster management involves three key stages of activities. Number one is pre-disaster stage. This comprises of activities undertaken to prevent disasters or reduce the risk of disasters. It involves prevention, the measures aimed at impending the occurrence of disaster event and or preventing such an occurrence having harmful effects on communities are known as prevention. Example, controlled burning of in bushfire prone areas before fire season. Preparedness, the state of readiness to deal with a threatening disaster situation or disaster. Preparedness is aimed to reduce casualties, damage to and destruction of property, damage to subsistence and, subsistence and crash crops, 
disruption of services, damage to national infrastructure, economic loss and loss of livelihood through effective response. It tends to be strongly oriented towards action by individual organizations and community at large. Example, mock crisis exercise, public awareness activities, post disaster reviews of actions taken and their impact, functional and readiness checks etc. Mitigation is the process and initiatives to reduce the impacts of disaster. While it, while it may be possible to prevent some disaster effects, other effects will, now, will obviously persist. The concept of mitigation recognizes this and maintains that the application of certain measures usually in the form of specific programs can moderate or reduce disaster effects. It can be classified in two categories. Number one is structural mitigation and another one is non-structural mitigation. The structural mitigations are structural that is built environment measures that are recommended to minimize the impacts of hazards. Structural mitigation measures are specific to hazard types based on multi-hazard mapping. Example, rains, bypass channels in urban flood prone areas building embankments and dikes where appropriate in flood prone areas, implementation of building codes during construction of buildings, retrofitting, site planning etc. Non-structural mitigation measures include processes which are not related to the built environment but are more socio-politically oriented. It includes legal framework like policies and legislations mandating land use planning, application of building codes while construction, implementation of rainwater harvesting etc. Incentives, government grants or subsidize or, or provide subsidies to include mitigation measures, incentives by insurance providers. While discussing about the awareness. This is in fact the generating community understanding of hazards and their potential impacts, risk areas, at risk population etc. Training and education is also one of the most important non-structural mitigation measures. It is a disaster awareness through training and education to public official, technical students, builders and craftsmen, school children etc. Socio-economic and developmental trajectory. Mitigation measures incorporated in developmental activities like promotion of livelihood diversification, agricultural mitigation etc. It is to be noted that active mitigation measures that is incentive based measures work better than passive mitigation measures which are the restrictive laws and controls. The overarching process of capacity building assists in the process of preservation Pre sorry, prevention, mitigation and preparedness. The primary focus of capacity building is to develop in individuals and societies the abilities to perform functions, solve problems and set and achieve activities. Though in the Indian context, capacity building is more oriented towards assisting in preparedness. It refers to the identification of existing resources and resources to be acquired. Acquiring or creating resources which are not existing and organization and training of personnel and coordination of such training activities for effective management of disasters. While discussing about the, the phases during disasters, the main activities to take prompt response to deal with the emergent situations and addressing the needs and requirements of victims or affected while the disaster is occurring or has just occurred. Example, running of flood camps while a flood is occurring, search and rescue operations, rehabilitations, etc. Some of the researchers have classified disaster management activities only in two phases, pre-disaster and post-disaster activities, while Sin disaster responses are also considered as post disaster activities. When we talk about the post disaster activities, these are the activities taken after a disaster has occurred with the objective to recover from the adverse impacts of the emergency situation 
as early as possible. It involves response, the provision of emergency services and public assistance during or immediately after a disaster in order to save lives, reduce health impacts, ensure public safety and meet the basic subsistence needs of the people affected. These are measures undertaken by following disasters. Occasionally, it is taken immediately prior to a disaster as well. Aspects of response includes evacuation that is post impact, search and rescue, restoration of essential life support and community systems. The effectiveness of response depends on the type of disaster severity and extent of disaster, efficient pre-impact action, effective identification of requirement. Key consideration in the response phase is the logistical constraint, coordination and information flow. Response is undertaken in conjugation with the following activities. Assessment is to identify the impacts of disasters, likely response requirement and needs that might emerge post disasters. It is also required to identify recovery requirements and provide base of transition from response to recovery phase. Example, rapid visual screening, post disaster impact assessment, post disaster need assessment. Second is immediate relief. It involves provision resources which include but is not limited to provisioning of materials, services, provisions and human resources to the affected area to restore normal functioning of the society as early as possible. The type of materials and services provided is described in other, other of the discussion. Response fees can take certain weeks to months. Now, let us talk about the rehabilitation and reconstruction phase. Resumption of services for the returning to normalcy while implementing preventing measures in order to minimize the impacts in case a disaster event rockers or recurs. It takes months to years depending on the response processes. There is no specific entry to exit criteria of each phase. The transition is not distinctly perceivable, but can be observed when monitored for a longer duration of time. Now, let us talk about disaster management in the Indian context. India is the seventh largest country by area in the world and the second most populous country with over 1.2 billion population. In terms of disasters, India is one of the 10 most disaster prone countries in the world. The country is vulnerable to a large number of natural and man-made disasters on account of its unique geoclimatic and socio-economic conditions. It is highly vulnerable to floods, droughts, cyclones, earthquakes, landslides and forest fires. Out of the 36 states and union territories, 27 of them are more disaster prone. Almost 58 percent of land mass is prone to earthquakes of moderate to very high intensity. Over 12 percent of land is prone to floods and river erosion. Of the 7516 kilometer coastline, close to 5700 kilometer is prone to cyclones and tsunamis. 68 percent of cultivable area is vulnerable to drought and hilly areas are at risk from landslides and avalanches. Moreover, India is also vulnerable to chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear CBRN emergencies and other man-made disasters. Disaster risks in India are further compounded by increasing vulnerabilities related to changing demographics, unplanned urbanization, development with high risk zones, environmental degradation, climate change, geological hazards, epidemics and pandemics. Clearly, all these contribute to a situation where disaster seriously threatens India's economy, its population and sustainable development. As per the World Bank study, the economic loss is accounted for 2 percent of GDP due to disasters. India is highly prone to disasters. Few of the examples of different types of disasters affecting India are like earthquake, 
Latur earthquake of 1993, Bhuj earthquake of 2001, like flood, Chennai flood of 2015 and Mumbai flood of 2005, the Uttarakhand deluge of 2013, Kosi, Kosi flood of 2008, Assam flood 2016, in cyclone or in tsunami like Odisha cyclone in 1999. Cyclone Eye Line 2009, Cyclone Hudud in 2014, and the dreaded Indian Ocean Tsunami in 2004. When we talk about the drought, like Usmanabad drought in 2016, recurrent drought in Bundelkhand, we talk about landslides and avalanches, example Malin landslides in 2014. Anthropogenic disasters are also there, like Bhopal gas tragedy in 1984, Amri fire accident incident in 2011, Thane building collapse in 2013, stampede in Datiya Madhya Pradesh in 2013, etc. Conflict, example ethnic conflict in Assam 2011, Gujarat riots 2002, etc. Biological diseases like avian flu, pest attacks, etc. The risk is compounded by vulnerability. The prime reasons may be summarized as changing demographics, uncontrolled and unplanned urbanization, urban rural poverty, degradation of environment and mismanagement of natural resources, lack of investment in proper infrastructure, etc. When we talk about the history of disaster management in India, the first documentation documented institutional approach for the management of disaster in India started in 1878. Though back then it was focused only on addressing Famines. In 1878, Scarcity Relief Division in Agriculture Ministry issued guidelines to address famine. In 1883, Famine Commission and the Famine Code were formulated. When we talk about the post-independent efforts, Famine Code to Scarcity Manuals were established. The basic responsibility for disaster response was assigned to the Ministry of Agriculture. Gradually, the ambit of disaster management increased and included response to floods, earthquakes and other environmental adversities. Central government supplemented the efforts of state government. Post-99 super cyclone, the idea of disaster management gained momentum. Post Bhuj earthquake of 2001, the state of Gujarat developed a state level disaster management act. In 2005, National Disaster Management Act of India was passed and in 2016, National Disaster Management Plan was published. International framework like the Rio 1992, Yokohama framework, Hyogo and Sendai frameworks are the international frameworks aiding in the development of disaster management processes at the national level. The Nodal Agency for Disaster Management in India is the National Disaster Management Authority operating under the Ministry of Home Affairs. The premier institute for training and capacity building is the National Institute of Disaster Management. The nodal agency is assisted by the disaster, state disaster management authorities and different departments. This was mandated by the National Disaster Management Act 2005. The agencies primarily involved with disaster management functions in India includes government departments both at the national and state levels, primarily the disaster management authorities, agriculture department, police, fire department, medical institutions and the military and paramilitary forces. Regional, local, community based bodies and non-governmental organizations, international or bilateral agencies like UN, IFRC, etc. also involved in various phases of disaster management. So now let us summarize this discussion about disaster management. It is an event which impacts the community, overwhelms the community's response capacity and requires multi-agency response. CRED defines disaster as an event fulfilling the following criteria. 10 or more people are reported to be killed by the event, 100 people reportedly injured, a call for international assistance or the declaration of a state of emergency. Disasters occur when adverse environmental events interact with a population that is sensitive to the event. 
has been comprises of planned activities that precede, continue during and post disaster event to reduce the impacts and effects of a hazard thereby preventing adverse impacts. The phases involved in disaster management include prevention, preparedness, mitigation, capacity building, response, reconstruction and rehabilitation. India is highly prone to disasters. The apex body for disaster management in India is the National Disaster Management Authority. The premier institute for training and capacity building program in India is the National Disaster Institute of Disaster Management. I hope you have understood the concept of disaster and disaster management. See you next time. Thank you.